So here they're saying that on a ship sailing in the Pacific Ocean where the temperature is 23.4 degrees Celsius, a balloon is filled with 2 liters of air. Okay. What will be the volume of the balloon when the ship reaches the Indian Ocean where the temperature is 26.1 degrees Celsius? Okay. So basically, you know that they are talking about uh, an uh, ocean level or sea level in general. Okay. So here, what do we know? The very fundamental thing that we know from so much of physics and chemistry that we have studied is that at sea level, your atmospheric pressure is going to be... Uh, Sorry, your pressure is going to be 1 atm, right? What does that mean? It means that no matter where you are, right, whether on the Pacific Ocean or Indian Ocean, anywhere your pressure is going to be 1 atm, which means pressure is constant, okay? Pressure is constant, temperature is changing, accordingly volume will change, okay? So here what we can do is we can apply our ideal gas law. We know that PV is equal to nRT. Correct. So, they have not said anything about how the number of moles is changing. So, we will assume that in the balloon, number of moles is going to remain constant. Correct. Number of moles is constant. Pressure is constant. R is the universal gas constant. So, that's any way a constant. You get V by T is equal to constant. Right. Okay. So, you have V1 by T1 is equal to V2 by T2. Okay. Your V1 is given to you as 2 liters. You have to find out V2. T1 is given to you. T2 is given to you. T1 is given to you as 23.4 degrees Celsius. And T2 is given to you as 26.1 degrees Celsius. Correct? So, uh, now let's write it in terms of Kelvin. Okay. So, uh, you have 23.4, so 273 plus 23.4, you get 4, 6, 9, 296.4 Kelvin, okay? And T2 is 26.1 degrees Celsius, so 273 plus 26.1, you get 1992. Okay, so you get 299.1 Kelvin, okay? So, these things are sorted. Just so substitute everything into the equation. You get um, 2 by 296.4 is equal to V2 by 299.1. What does it mean? It means that your V2 is equal to 2 into 299.1 by 296.4. Correct? How much is that? That is basically around 2.7. Right? So, 2 into... Basically, what I'm trying to write is 1 minus, sorry, 1 plus 2.7, 296.4. This is what I want to write, okay? So, how much will this come out to be? If you have so much time on your hands, then you can calculate. But generally, you know that we're prepping for the coming examinations of JE and NEET. And you know that that's not where you have time to do all of these calculations. So, I will advise you... Go for a value that is almost 2 liters, okay? As close as possible to 2, slightly greater, but almost 2 liters. This is my advice. Let's look for it in the options. Let's see what we have. I want a value that is almost 2 liters. I have, yes, I have option A, 2.018 liters. What did I say? Almost 2, slightly greater. 2.018 is almost 2, slightly greater than 2. So, option A, 2.018 liters is going to be the right answer to this question. So, here in this question, they're asking us to calculate the oxidation number of the underlined element. And here in the following compound, of course, and the compound given to us here is FeNO plus H2O taken 5 times SO4. Okay, now this is a complex compound right or a coordination compound here basically you have the concept of coordinate bond or coordinate covalent bond or dative bond whatever name you want to call it right that is the concept that we apply here more about that concept in 12th standard inorganic chemistry for now we just need to find out what is going to be the oxid oxidation state of fe in this complex compound Okay, and I'm not saying complex because it's complicated. This is how we refer to it in chemistry, right? It's called a complex compound. Okay, so here 
basically what is the fundamental understanding here is that charge on cation is equal to the charge on anion in magnitude not in simple okay this is equal to the charge on anion okay why do i care because see this is a neutral species okay your anion is sulfate so4 sulfate you know this okay how does sulfate generally exist you know that sulfate ion exists as so4 2 minus which means the charge on the anion is known to you okay sulfate exists as 2 minus so charge on the anion is minus 2 so your total charge on the cation is going to be plus 2 okay like i said previously we care only about the magnitude. So, charge in the cation is coming out to be plus 2. So, basically, Fe NO plus H2O taken 5 times, this entire cation has a charge of 2 plus. Okay. Now, equate the idea that this entire charge is being contributed by individual elements, right? Fe is contributing, NO plus is contributing, 5 H2O is contributing to a charge of 2 plus. Okay. Assume Fe to have an oxidation state of X. Now, from here, you're champion, right? You know how to solve it. So, see, very, uh, just because this is the start of the chapter, they have told you that here, NO is existing as NO+. Later on, as you uh, progress through inorganic chemistry, this information will not be made available to you, okay? So, you have certain things that you have to know what is, uh, the charge on the ion or what is the oxidation state something is displaying this these are some some things you have to know okay like at this level i assume that you know what is the charge on sulfate ion yes similarly as you go ahead the charge on no should be known to you that here no exists as no plus okay no is anyway funny thing it can take no minus it can take no it can take no plus so yes there's a lot of confusion but here it is taking plus one okay Basically, you have X plus 1 plus. Now, you have H2O, right? When you see water in your everyday life and everyday reactions, when you write water, do you write it as H2O plus or H2O minus? We write it as H2O only, right? Because H2O is a neutral molecule. So, charge contributed by a neutral molecule is going to be 0. This is equal to plus 2, correct? So, you have X plus 1 is equal to plus 2 which means your x is equal to plus 1, okay? So, see, concentrate here, Fe has an oxidation state of plus 1. Iron, generally, we see that it takes an oxidation state of plus 2, plus 3, right? Look at most of the iron compounds that you've studied about, ferrous sulfate, Fe2O3, FeCl3, mostly you will see plus 2, plus 3. This is one of those few places where you have iron in plus 1 oxidation state. This compound is called nitrosoferous sulfate. This is a very important in a test in inorganic chemistry and this is called the brown ring complex. This is very, very important. Like I can't put enough stars on this entire slide to talk about this compound. Right? You will study about it in qualitative analysis, inorganic qualitative analysis, which is important. Right? So, Finally, what is the charge on Fe here? Charge on Fe is going to be plus 1. So, option C, plus 1 is the right answer to this question. So, here they are asking, what is the sum of oxidation numbers of oxygen and hydrogen in O2 and H2 respectively? Okay. So, how do you go about with this question? You have to find out the oxidation number of uh, oxygen here. Let's call this X and oxidation number of hydrogen in H2 and you have to report what is the value of X plus Y, okay? Don't think too much, okay? This answer is exactly what you're thinking right now. Answer is going to be zero. See, O2 and H2, both of these are basically your homodiatomic molecules and you have one oxygen and you have another oxygen. You have two oxygen atoms and they are forming a bond, okay? Now, in this, what is going to be the average oxidation state of oxygen? it is going to be zero, right? This is basically how, this is existing in the uh, very elemental, this is an elemental form basically. So here basically your oxidation state is going to be zero. Here also it is going to be zero because, because these are your homodiatomic molecules, okay? Oxidation state is going to be zero. Why? Because it is a bond formed between 
two atoms of the same kind it's not possible that one oxygen will be more electronegative than the other oxygen right that's not possible one hydrogen will not be more electronegative than the other hydrogen it's not like one will become h plus one will become h minus and they are forming h2 that's not how it happens correct so both of them will have an oxidation state of zero so zero plus zero is zero right answer here is going to be option a zero all right so here they're saying that in the below given redox reaction ch4 plus 2o2 gives you co2 plus 2h2o the oxidizing agent and the substance being oxidized are going to be what okay so oxidizing agent is basically the substance that is getting reduced okay substance being oxidized very simple whatever is getting oxidized that's going to be that latter substance right so let's see basically you can define oxidation by a lot of different ways okay so here we'll go with the simplest definition here you can see that you have ch4 right you have ch4 and that ch4 becomes co2 okay so what has happened you took ch4 from this you removed hydrogen right or alternatively i can say that here you have added oxygen both of these point to one thing which is the definition of oxidation oxidation is defined as the removal of hydrogen or the addition of oxygen correct so what is the substance being oxidized ch4 right so ch4 is the latter thing which means d and c can be eliminated very conveniently <clears throat> now what is the oxidizing agent okay what is the oxidizing agent in the given reaction so obviously see you have to check for the reactant side only not on the product side this is something that goes without saying okay and you have o2 you have o2 right so o2 is the substance that is going to be the oxidizing agent we can check by oxidation number method as well so here you can see o2 has an oxidation state of zero on the reactant side why because it exists as a homodiatomic molecule so this is going to be zero now when you come to co2 here this will be minus two and in h2o also it's going to be minus two so basically oxygen went from zero to minus two zero to minus two is what zero to minus two is reduction so oxygen is the species that is getting reduced i have spoken about it here right it is the species that is getting reduced hence it acts as an oxidizing agent which means option a O2 and CH4 is going to be the right answer to this question. So here the saying predict the type of linkage in H4P2O7. Is it peroxy? Is it oxy? Is it direct linkage between central atom? Is it a double bond between central atoms? So let's see. Um, what we'll do is we'll start with the assumption of only oxide forms right so there'll be no peroxide forms only oxide forms which means we are starting with the assumption of zero peroxy linkages or only oxy linkages okay h4p2o7 because if this strikes then you don't need to check for anything else okay if this does not strike then we'll check for peroxy linkages right so what happens here you can see that you have hydrogen so it'll take plus one let's say phosphorus takes on x and oxygen will take on minus two okay so what is going to be here you'll have 4 into plus 1 plus 2 into x plus 7 into minus 2 this is equal to total charge which is 0 on the entire species the total charge is 0 right because it's a neutral species which means you have 4 plus 2x minus 14 is equal to 0 so you have 2x minus 10 is equal to 0 you have x is equal to plus 5 okay so phosphorus here exists in the state of plus 5 and yes that is okay right why because phosphorus can take an oxidation state from minus 3 to plus 5 yes so if it can go from minus 3 to plus 5 and you got the value as plus 5 so your assumption was correct yes phosphorus can take on this case which means option b oxy linkage was the correct assumption hence option b is the right answer to this question